कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, religious bodies call for understanding. Duitu Turanga surprised by Lalambalavu's comment. And Kishore Kumar terminated. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Smith. The Sanata and Dharam Pratinidhi Sabah Fiji says they're mindful of other religious bodies in the country. Sanata and Dharam President Sarju Prasad was responding to comments made by Methodist Church of Fiji and Member of Parliament Linda Thambuya, who questioned the celebration of Diwali on Sunday. Apanisa Wangarandovu reports Prasad says the festival falls on a Sunday this year and it marks an auspicious time in their religious calendar. The Sanatam Dharam says they do not just celebrate their festivities at any time they want, as they need to follow the tradition of their belief. Sunday is a is the auspicious time. You see, our festivals are celebrated at auspicious times, and that is decided in uh, uh, with regard to the solar system. And uh, it is not that you you can celebrate anything at any time. There are auspicious occasions and auspicious times when we uh, set uh, our festivals. While responding to the Methodist Church on comment regarding the use of fireworks, Prasad says respect for other religions remains. Our firecrackers and other things don't start until darkness falls. So that uh, goes in line with uh, what your concern is or what the concern of other people are. We have always and always will be um, very t tolerant and we will always be mindful of our other brothers and sisters. The Methodist Church had taken the issue to social media, saying they hope more discussions had taken place. Meanwhile, opposition MP Linda Tambuya also made a post attacking the day of auspicious occasion. National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad shot back at Tambuya saying she should first understand why it is being celebrated on a Sunday. Apinisawangaradobu, FBC News. FBC News understands that both posts by Linda Thambuya and the Methodist Church of Fiji have been removed from their respective social media accounts. The Social Democratic Liberal Party's General Secretary, Emelien Duituturanga, was surprised by the public comment made by party member Ratanangama Lalambalavu. The High Chief of Dakaundrove, following the party's management board meeting last Thursday, stated he is just tagging along and making the numbers. Apanisa Wangarindovo reports Ratanangama was visibly unhappy, walking out from the meeting, which was held to adopt the process for electing the leaders of the party. The Sudelpa's General Secretary claims the meeting was a success, saying Ratu Nengama did not raise his frustration until after the meeting. Well, I'd, I'd rather not comment on that. Um, I mean, our leaders uh, are our leaders of the party, and from time to time they will make comments. I, I just saw the coverage, um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Ritu Turanga says she is unaware as to what Ratu Nengama is unhappy about. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not aware uh, of why, why that is. Ratu Nengama, following the meeting, also said things are becoming more transparent now, despite not being pleased with the meeting and not saying what he is unhappy about. At least we are trying to resolve most of uh, the things that have uh, come before us. The party's general secretary says a leaders forum has been formed where members can raise their grievances. Sudelpa member Linda Tambuya agrees that some positive things came out from the meeting. Yeah, well, I was able to express uh, some of the concerns I had, but that for the sake of the party and to be able to move forward. So Delpa will elect its leaders at the AGM on the 28th of this month. Apeniso Wangarandovu, FBC News. Cell style publisher of his Facebook page, Kishore Kumar, has been terminated by the Education Ministry. In a statement this afternoon, the ministry confirms it has terminated Kishore Kumar, a computer science teacher at Ratasukuna Memorial School, for posting derogatory comments on social media against Member of Parliament Lenora Ngerengeretambua. Minister Rosie Akbar says the ministry will neither condone nor tolerate any breach of the Civil Servants' Code of Conduct. 
Akbar has reminded all ministry employees that the Civil Servants Code of Conduct must at all times be upheld and preserved in a manner that promotes the integrity, impartiality and effectiveness of the ministry and maintains the public confidence and trust. She says employees engaging in activities that bring disrepute to the nobility of the teaching profession, whether during official working hours or outside of official working hours, will face disciplinary action. Akbar warns that education ministry employees found guilty of harassment, victimization or discrimination will face termination. The minister also emphasized that acts of insubordination are grounds for immediate disciplinary action and termination. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama says the construction of the Gracefield service station in Nawaidomba Nandi is timely. Speaking during the opening today, Mbani Marama says the project injects $10 million into the economy in a period where COVID-19 has crippled many of the vital sectors. Details with Philippe Naikaso. The Prime Minister has commended Grace Road for investing in the economy despite the tough times currently being faced. Of all the towns and cities in Fiji, nowhere do you feel the crunch of the COVID-19 pandemic like you do here in the West. It's a problem. The construction of this new complex will support 40 new jobs during a time when many Fijians are unemployed. But we know this complex is more than its physical structure. Today, it also stands as a mighty sign of confidence in this division's future. Confident that this local economy will not only grow back to life but come back stronger than ever. For Grace Road, this particular project is vital as it will benefit the local community. We are not just a retailer but go beyond that to contribute to the health of the Fijian people and economic prosperity. We will continue to expand Gravefield mixed development all around Fiji, along with agricultural development and Fijian-made products together. This is also the largest service station in the country. Philippe Naikaso, FBC News. While there has been a notable increase in compliance from businesses over the last few months, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission says this will not restrain them from charging unethical traders. Over 440 cases of non-compliance and consumer issues are currently pending before the courts. Pranita Prakash reports. The majority of the cases before the court includes scam cases. Uh, this shows that uh, previously there's a high degree of non-compliance. And some of the cases being called now are 2014, 2015, some 2017 cases. A chunk of uh, that has to do with the land scam uh, cases, you've got the travel agent scam cases, you've got the online uh, boutique scam cases. So a huge chunk of these 400 cases is to do with scams that had happened previously. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission has changed its strategy to ensure compliance level increases with different seasons, we make sure that our focus is uh, on uh, on inspections that has to do with the festivity. Uh, why? Because this thing changes. Uh, so the type of businesses that we'll be looking at will change. During Diwali and during fest certain festivities, there's a peak in demand. And because there's a peak in demand, we have to make sure that the inspections and the compliance also show the same peak. So what we do is we map ourselves onto the... Uh, market demand patterns. Uh, the council will also take appropriate actions and uh, I would say we will not ha hesitate to take appropriate action and report this any unethical practices to enforcement agencies if traders are found to be engaging in any dubious practice. The two agencies have also increased awareness to ensure that businesses are in compliance and consumers understand their responsibility. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Up ahead, Diwali shoppers urge to spend wisely and proper facilities imperative to students' learning. By today, we are Radio Fiji both Radio Fiji Rosu Tau. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharka.
While the spirit of Diwali is already filling the air, Fijians have been reminded to spend wisely. Due to the effects of COVID-19, many people have either lost their jobs or are working reduced hours. So those celebrating the Festival of Lights have been urged to make wise decisions. Pranita Prakash reports. Fijians need to take care of their financial health, especially this year. Spend carefully. We have to be good to each other and we have to be very very cautious of the fact that fireworks perhaps should be limited should be you should know where limit where to rule the line so that you don't spend unnecessary money in that the fiji seva ashram sang says the festival of lights is not only about fireworks you enjoy the diwali but don't burn your hard earned money on firecrackers there are other way of enjoying get along with your family Enjoy a nice feast with your family. Tell the moral story to your children of the Diwali rather than burning your money because the money doesn't come so easily. So that, that is one of the main message, you know, that we have to change with the time. That is the important thing. Even the consumer watchdog is advising Fijians to do comparative shopping to get the best deals around and to exercise their rights and responsibilities. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. 19 communities have been identified as most vulnerable to sea level rise and require immediate interventions. Environment Minister Dr. Mahindra Reddy says they are working tirelessly to ensure coastal lives and properties are safeguarded from the impacts of climate change. Kelly Vadala reports the minister was speaking at the launch of the tripartite partnership on nature-based solutions capacity building for Fiji. The ministry has been funding nature-based seawall from its environmental trust funds. We need to look at a more sustainable, a more um, uh, uh, eco-friendly uh, and, and cheaper uh, technology to protect these communities. It is at that particular point in time we decided that we should explore and examine the use of nature-based solutions to protect communities who are threatened by nature itself. Dr. Mahendra Reddy says around 90 other communities have requested for similar NBC wall to be erected to protect them from coastal erosion. Uh, we have established uh, from uh, 2018 uh, a number of uh, coastal areas with nature-based uh, seawall where uh, we use uh, mangrove, uh, boulders, uh, <coughs> soft stones and uh, vetiver grass to erect uh, nature-based seawall to protect uh, these communities. The UN resident coordinator has also reiterated that more effort is needed in keeping the Fijian community safe from any disaster. All of us, when we go back, sit down and you know consider how to ensure that those standards that have been established nationwide are implemented when it comes to community rehabilitation. The Environment Ministry adds that achieving a sustainable living is everyone's responsibility globally. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Fijians on the island of Moala in Lao were advised on the importance of disaster preparedness as we enter another cyclone season. Minister for Rural and Maritime Development, Inia Seruratu, says dis disaster awareness is critical in these trying times, particularly for the Lao group, as they have often bared the brunt of cyclones in recent past. The minister had Talonor session with villages in Moala on a joint mission program to southern Lao with UN agencies. Josai Nunga with this report. Inia Seruratu says Fijians must learn from past natural hazards and its impact on society and our economy. The focus uh, is uh, basically on uh, uh, humanitarian assistance, particularly post uh, TC Herald and of course COVID uh, uh, recovery and uh, rehab and most importantly uh, development as well. UN Resident Coordinator Sanaka Samarsina and Director NDMO Vesiti Soko also distributed disaster preparedness kits to students. To Rangani Koro of Kate Ravilas, Marika Bolotolu says they have experienced severe devastation of disaster. However, they are capitalizing on whatever resources they have to sustain them. The 70 year old adds they've been using the community hall and church for evacuation purposes when a disaster strikes. For us here on the island, we always follow advice from the National Disaster Management Office 
and the weather office about tropical disturbances. I have been holding this position for the past 22 years and we've been uh, following the same evacuation procedure throughout. This is a seawall constructed by Keterra villages and has been protecting them from the drastic impact of climate change and sea level rise over the past 30 years. Chosa Yenunga, FBC News. School committees in the Maritime Islands are prioritizing teachers' well-being and safety to ensure they're not hesitant of being deployed to maritime zones. The committees are also focused on ensuring that the best facilities are provided for maritime children to enhance learning. The Wai District School Committee on Moala Island in Lao believes quality school facilities are critical to boosting classroom study. Josina Nunga again with this story. School manager Temo Tawakitini says around $11,000 was used to construct this new footpath to ensure the safety of students and teachers during wet season. We would like to thank the government's assistance in ensuring quality education is delivered to Fiji's future leaders. The committee and villages have so far refurbished the teachers' quarters and classrooms. We want to ensure that teachers do enjoy their service while on the island. Meanwhile, Rural and Maritime Development Minister Iniasi Ruiratu also commissioned a new Wawulek Leka community access in Tobu village, Totoya. I hope the new footbridge will improve uh, accessibility for the villages, especially students. And we are glad to be on the island to have one-on-one -on -one talks with you on various issues faced in the community and how we can address them. Turangani Korol Rimutupou says the footbridge has brought relief to these villages. This is something we've been wanting for years. At times our children are unable to attend classes due to poor access to schools. These villages were also given a chance to raise their concerns during the Talano session with the government officials, UN delegates and members of the civil society organizations. Chosei Anunga, FBC News. A former employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had her case acquitted in the Suva Magistrates Court today. Azreen Shabnam Khan was charged with four different corruption-related charges by the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption in 2018. Apanisa Wangarindova reports FICAC incompetency led to the case being discharged. Khan was charged with one count each of abuse of office, obtaining a financial advantage, causing a loss and giving false information to public servant under the Crimes Act of 2009. It was alleged that she fraudulently caused payments amounting to more than $40,000 from monthly allowances sent by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to the Fiji High Commission in New Delhi, where she used to serve as the second secretary. She was also alleged to have given the former acting permanent secretary for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs false information regarding the interviews and appointments of locally engaged staff employed by the Fiji High Commission in New Delhi, which then led the acting PS approving local employment. In the super magistrates today, FICAC requested the trial to be deferred as three of their important witnesses are in India. The magistrate put FICAC lawyer and investigative officer on the spot. They wanted to know why no arrangements were made for these witnesses to be present during the trial since it has almost been a year since the trial date was set. No proper documents were filed and the investigation officer confirmed she only started making arrangements two weeks ago. The case was then dismissed by the court. Apinisa Wangarindobu, FBC News. And Apinisa joins us now with the latest in business. Radio Fiji One, Kunulewu could become a significant part of the nation's tourism recovery efforts, potentially increasing national tourism earnings by $339 million. A study conducted on Kunulewu by the International Finance Corporation provides critical information for the World Bank Group and the Fijian government to design a project that will support future growth and recovery from the impacts of COVID-19. 
Minister for Tourism, Fayaz Koya, says the development of tourism in Bonolebu is largely undebt and is critical in ensuring our economic recovery. The Fijian government has estimated international arrivals in 2022 will fall to 70 percent of the 2019 levels due to the COVID-19 pandemic, yielding about $2.12 billion in tourism earnings. Marriott International on Friday reported a surprise third quarter profit helped by cost cutting and a near doubling of occupancy rates in its North American hotels from the previous quarter as laser travel rebounded on easing of COVID-19 curbs. Sharon from HFC Bank join us now with the latest from the money market. A quick review of trade on our South Pacific Stock Exchange last week. SPX market capitalization recorded an increase of 1.32% and concluded the week at $3.44 billion. A total of 28,000 shares were traded in 21 transactions, adding up to about $33,000. On Wall Street, equities rallied hard last week with the S&P 500 up 7.3%, recording the best gains in an election week since 1932. Meanwhile, the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 jumped 9.4%, its highest since April. In exchanges, the U.S. dollar hit a 10-week low as investors resorted to trade exposed currencies. Some in the market are betting that a Joe Biden-led White House could mean calmer situation, boost world commerce and ease monetary policy. With the U.S. dollar index falling to its lowest since early September, the Chinese yuan struck a 28-month peak. The Kiwi hit a 19-month high, and the Aussie dollar rose to its highest in seven weeks. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Finaka. Here are the local exchange rates. As said earlier today, the Fiji dollar showed some strength against the Chinese yuan, the U.S. Green Bank, the Aussie dollar, and the PNG Kina. It slipped against the Kiwi dollar and uh, the euro and also the yen. Prices were rising on the commodities market. Crude oil was up slightly at just above $38 a barrel. Gold was uh, up closing at $1,995 per ounce. And silver closed up at $25.74 per ounce. The Ministry of Youth handed over assistance under the Youth Farm Initiative Program to six youth clubs in Rotuma to help them in farming. Minister Praveen Kumar says the Fijian government is determined to strengthen the youth sector through different ministries. Leading a delegation from his ministry to the island of Rotuma, the minister says they aim to have a vibrant youth sector in the near future that contributes to the economy, reduces poverty and equalizes living standards. The program provides grants to youth clubs to cultivate the land and grow crops. A total of 100 youth members of Rotuma benefited from this farming assistance. That's all from Business Tonight. Jamie joins us now with the latest from Sports. Thanks and good evening in Sports Tonight. Ndolo Koto and Nakarawa yet to join camp. And Rewa shifts focus to Fiji Fat. This and more coming up. Bula FM number two and Seri. Glasgow Warriors Mesulam in Dolokoto and Leon in Nakarawa have yet to join the Flying Fijians camp in France. The performance of young players in the Ram Sami Super side has not gone unnoticed. Super captain John Stewart has commended those who stood by the team throughout the season whether they had game time or not. Stewart says the young players uh, stepped up during times when seasoned players were injured or unavailable. He adds they are one of the reasons the team is on track to winning its third skipper title in a row. I'd like to take this time to thank the young boys uh, for, first of all, to stick with the team. Uh, they were not given a lot of opportunity, for, uh, I think, for, for the first three or four games, but uh, they had faith. They had faith in the management and they stuck to the team. Once they got the opportunity to play, they proved themselves and they kept uh, carrying hopes for Suba until today. 
Guiding the Flow Valves uh, Super Football side to a Vodafone Premier League title after six years is a milestone achievement for captain Felipe Mbaravilala. Ever since joining the team in 2016, Mbaravilala has been silently striving to win his first major title for the Whites. Tali Materakula has more. Felipe Mbaravilala has finally achieved what he said to accomplish four years since joining the capital side. I'm feeling very happy. Uh, I can't explain how I'm feeling at the moment uh, for after a long time. And I've won a major tournament for Suva. The 26-year-old says to win the title alongside the younger Suva players is the highlight of his football career. We've been looking forward for, for this uh, from a long time ago. Uh, we managed to work together as a team. Even though we had some um, ups and downs uh, from the beginning of the season, we didn't uh, play it as a team. But as we train together, train more, and uh, we managed to get that, uh, that uh, game plan from our coaches. Yes, uh, it's an honor playing uh, with this uh, bunch of uh, youth uh, players. Coach Babs Khan says it was the expectations and support of the officials and fans that brought the best out of the team. As a coach, uh, you know, it's, it's an honor to win the National League. You know, it's a big uh, Vodafone Premier League. You know, it's an uh, honor. And um, when I really got here, I was really feeling for the president. You know, he never won a tournament and, you know, they were applying pressure on me. And it brought the very best out of me. And, uh, and I got the very best out of the players. The Whites dedicated the league title to their families, fans and officials who were their pillars throughout the league season. Tali Materkula, FBC Sports. The Rewa football side has quickly shifted its focus to the Fiji fact after finishing second in the Vodafone Premier League. The Delta Tigers were pushed to the wire in the last match of the league, coming back from a 3-1 deficit to beat Lautoka 5-3 yesterday. Felipe Naikaso has more. Rawa coach Michael Rondo has praised the efforts of his team during the VPL season. But when you compare it to our previous uh, season, uh, it's a total uh, 360 degrees uh, turn in terms of performance. Uh, in our last game last year, we were fighting for survival. Uh, but uh, this year we have made a very big difference with the boys to, uh, to finish uh, at 27 points. <laughs> Rondu says with the Fiji fact next, they are in a tough pool with defending champions Lambasa, Ba and Nasinu. We have two weeks to, to prepare and see if we can come up with another combination of players. Because uh, tomorrow the, the players, uh, police players uh, uh, go to uh, uh, for their work commitment and they might not be back on time. So it's, uh, it's a recycle of some players back into the team. However, for Lotoka, it's back to the drawing board as they finished sixth overall in the league. We will, we will, be, we will become prepared uh, for Fiji Fact, that's for sure. Uh, there's some more work to be done, uh, especially fitness level and some uh, uh, structure-wise, we need to work on our structure. The first round of the Fiji Fact matches will be played on the 21st and 22nd of this month. Philippe and Aikaso, FBC Sports. Aston Villa has now moved up to sixth in the English Premier League after claiming an impressive 3-0 victory over Arsenal today. Ollie Watkins scoring twice for Villa. The loss for the Gunners, on the other hand, has pushed them to 11th spot on the table. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in new media, check out the China International Import Expo, including a $3 million supercar. This and more after the break. By today, I am ready to go to Radio Fiji. Radio Fiji is going to go to Radio Fiji. Radio Fiji 2, the country of the country. And Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Good evening and welcome to the weather world. Hope your weekend was fantastic. The weather was so good, like really tempting. Oh, it's Diwali week. Let me tell you, you all look lovely coming out in your pretty colorful outfits. And again, very thankful for sunshine. Now, did this sunshine stick around everywhere? Well, let's have a look. 
In the west, the humidity level was skyrocketing. It was very humid day, almost fell like 36 degrees. East west from Back Harbor to Suva, a hot day as well. The sky was clear and cloudless. And up north, we can't go wrong with how beautiful the sun shone upon this part of the country. So overall, the sun played a good role. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, high tide at 2.15 a.m. with low tide at 8.44 a.m. Sunrise at 6.23 for tomorrow, well, you can carry on with your Diwali cleaning or simply put those beddings out in the sun because the weather will just be great. Tomorrow's temps, all centers will have great temps, warm centers all around. And looking further on to Wednesday, whoopsie, I see rain from here, but hope it doesn't stick around. Well, that's all from the weather world. The beautiful Jackie joins you next. Thanks so much, Angie. And I must say, you look absolutely stunning tonight. In Fiji Impulse, we asked, how much do you plan on spending for this Diwali? Because time is very hard now, eh? So it might be uh, spend 150 or 200 like it. I won't be spending much, but just on the five walks. We haven't decided on anything yet because we are facing financial difficulties. It's going to be a pretty tight uh, Diwali. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be the same for most of, uh, most of all. And recapping the main stories for tonight, religious bodies call for understanding. Duitu Turanga surprised by Lalambalavu's comment and Kishore Kumar terminated. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question last week we had asked, should those found breaching LTA laws and buses be prosecuted? 70% answered yes. And this week we're asking, have you already prepared your Diwali decorations? Visit our FBC website to answer. And on to today's shot of the day. First one for the week. Here's a hidden beauty, a long green bean flower in all its majestic purple petals. And be sure to send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, from the team and I, stay safe. Bye for now. मार सामने नाइक है बम वाली बुल लटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन